Hey, it's a nice. Let me tell you, can I tell you something? What's up? So I, all week I say, and you know, coming up on Thursday, Michael B. Jordan will be here. And uh -huh. every time I've said it, all the women in the audience each <laughs> night have. <laughs> they did that. Yeah. They did that. <laughs> that's, that's pretty cool. I think you might be the front runner for sexiest man alive this you know, year. Hey, man. So, somebody, uh, somebody right into somebody. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Well, they love you. I mean, they really do. Nah, it's man, good to see it. This must be an exciting time for you because well, not only are you the star of this movie, you're a producer of the movie, yep. and so you really put this movie together, and it opens everywhere tomorrow. Everywhere tomorrow, man. I'm really excited about it. I mean, I found out about the story about five years ago about Brian Stevenson, and I was a little embarrassed that I didn't know that much about him, so I got a chance to listen to his TED Talk and hear him speak and realize all the important work that he was doing, and it was, uh, you know, I... I was shocked that he wasn't a household name. So well, I, tell everybody a little bit about him, because I think most people don't know Brian well, Stevenson. Well, Brian Stevenson is a defense attorney. He set up his office's EJI, which is the Equal Justice Initiative, and he um, down in, um, in Montgomery, Alabama, and he pretty much dedicated his entire life to equal justice and uh, fighting the, the criminal justice system. Um, basically, he, uh, he gets exonerated. He exonerates um, wrongfully convicted um, felons that are on uh, people uh, people that are on death row. Yeah, well, they're, they're, they're yeah, they're technically felons, they're, they're technically, but they're but, not. But they're yeah. wrong, wrong, wrongfully convicted. And he's dedicated their life to getting them off death row. And I had the honor of being able to play him. Jamie Foxx plays Walter McMillan, the movie he's based around. And uh, yeah, I felt it was a I don't know, it's my responsibility to kind of take on this role. Did you feel like it really spoke to you when you heard his story and heard about it? Yeah, I mean, I felt like well. Listen, this thing happened 30 some odd years ago, uh, but it feels like it could have happened yesterday. Have you ever played a living person before? Uh, a living person before, no. So that's like, you it's, must be I, nervous I, when you show them the movie, him the movie the first time. Well, or... yeah, I mean, I've had the, I played Oscar Grant at Fruitville Station. Yeah, know? but. But, you know, he, he's, uh, he, he was tragically murdered, but I got a chance to get to know him through the people that knew him the best. I had a chance to watch the movie with his mom for the first time and right. the family members, and that was, that was extremely That's heavy, yeah. Wracking. In this, in this situation, being able to play Brian, you know, he, he's there, he's a resource. I can call him, I can ask him for help if I get, you know, if I get stuck anywhere, if, yeah. I, if I need to, you know, look to him for, 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 uh, for motivation for things. But then also, he can call me and tell me when I'm messing up, too. Yo, did he do that? <laughs> no, he didn't. He was okay, actually good. really, you know, he was really supportive. He was actually excited that I played him. Yeah, I'm sure. Well, I mean, women scream when they see you. Why wouldn't he be excited <laughs> he wanted about me to that? Keep the Creed body, but uh, it, uh, <laughs> I kept you, the arms. I kept the arms. You've been holding screenings, special screenings, this week, and one of them was hosted by um, Kobe Bryant. Kobe Bryant, hosted yeah. one. How did that happen? No, it was incredible. I think Warner Brothers had reached out to him. He's a, uh, you know, he's a big um, advocate for, you know, criminal criminal justice and and um, and just equal rights in general. So he came on board. Uh, you know, he he agreed to host a couple screenings down in in, in Baldwin Hills, and um, and it was uh, it was amazing. Did you, you know, know him beforehand? Out. Yeah, I got a chance. I did an Apple commercial with him a few oh, years back, okay. where I played the young Kobe. Uh, and, and that was pretty cool and interesting. Yeah. But he's the GOAT. You know, he's one of the greatest of all time. So to be able to kind of talk to him and, like, spit basketball and stuff like that was pretty cool. Are you a Lakers fan? I'm a Knicks fan. A Knicks fan, okay. Pray for me. Pray for me. And so you don't... Pray for me. <laughs> yes, pray for me. It's been You've tough. never been tasted tough. any kind of success, really, ever in your whole life as a fan, have you? No, it's, it's, been, it's been rough. But, yeah. I, but I'm a LeBron fan. You're a LeBron fan. I'm a LeBron do you know fan. LeBron as well? I do know LeBron. You had a screening for the Lakers, right? I did. I had a screening for the Lakers, but also I had a chance to take about 20 incarcerated youth down to the Lakers practice facility and get a chance to have them talk to Ron Artest, to Robert Ory, to the, to the Lakers players. They played five on five. Some of the Lakers got a chance to coach them and stuff like that. So it was really incredible to get them, give them a chance and opportunity to get outside of jail and, um, and, 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 and be around their idols, people that they look up to, 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 to kind of encourage them to kind of go down this right path. And and everyone sat down and watched the movie? They did. They sat down and watched the movie at a different time. But this, I, got, I had an opportunity to do the genius talk with, uh, with the Lakers and stuff like that. So it was really, really a cool experience. I wonder how when a basketball team watches a movie, they situate everyone. Because, like, you don't want Anthony Davis in the front. <laughs> they have huge chairs. Yeah, you know, they do. So everything is, like, just, like, just giant Oversized? The, everything's oversized. The doorways, you're like, oh, wow, okay, cool. I guess JaVel <laughs> McGee and Dwight Howard does have to, like, come through here. So did you, cool. you just went back to your high school recently, right? I did, I did. When you went back to, the high, to your high school, which is New Jersey, you, did everything seem small to you? 
No. It did. Only oh, high school, I guess, that doesn't really no, happen. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I was probably the same height as I was in high school. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. But no, nah, but it was cool to go back and actually talk to the kids, you know, honestly. just. Uh, did they freak out when you came? They did. Yeah. Like, so I had a photo shoot there first, and they tried to keep it as quiet as possible. But when you see, you know, people, you know, the kids coming from the lunchroom and peeking into the gym, and then by the time, you know, fifth period hit, it was just all out mayhem. I would so, think so. Yeah, it was pretty crazy. But... Did you see any of your old teachers? Are any of them still there? I did. A lot of them were still there. A lot of some of my old teach, well, one of my old teachers is now the principal. Uh, the, you know, the lunch ladies are still there, the security guards, the janitors. Like it, it was a, uh, it was pretty surreal to come back and um, and see all those faces. But it was a lot of love. Did you play basketball in high school? I did. Did I you did. play football in high school? I did not. You did not. I okay. did not. I was basketball, baseball, track. I did everything except for football. Actually. You played high school football on Friday Night Lights. <laughs> that counts. As a, as a, as a, a bigger audience. As a 20-year-old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a 20-year-old playing high school That's the best time football. to play high school football when you hit 20. You can really excel. <laughs> well, we're going to take a break. We're going to come back and see a clip from the new Just movie, Mercy. Just Mercy. Michael B. Jordan is here. We'll be right back. You can't keep an innocent man in prison while you try to salvage your reputation. This is about the people of this county who have hired me to keep them safe. And what people are you talking about right now? The ones from this neighborhood? Or the ones from the black community you took Johnny D from? You think they feel safe? Your job isn't to defend a conviction, Tommy. It's to achieve justice. And as long as you keep fighting this, someone from your county has literally gotten away with murder. That is Michael B. Jordan in Just Mercy, the critically acclaimed performance in the critically acclaimed movie that you produced. And now, when Jamie Foxx is in this movie, Brie Larson is in the movie, yes. do you personally recruit them to be in the film? I, I in, in this case, I did. I, I, when I read the script, and we've been developing it for about you know four or five years or so, the only person that kept coming to mind was Jamie. I was mm -hmm. like, this guy, this is the vehicle for him. You know, I, I, he's on my Mount Rushmore of, of the greatest of all time. And I think he's so he's so talented. Like this He is might be the most talented person I have ever met in I, my life. From yeah. from he does everything. You know, yeah. from singing to writing to you know the stand-up, you know, comedian, math, so, drama, math, math, you great name math, it. swimming, yeah. tennis, he's great at tennis. <laughs> no, man, he's uh but no, he he's he's an incredible person. But I got a chance to give him a call and was like, hey man, I need you to do this. And he said, and yeah. he gave a very he good said, performance. Very like uh, a low key, uh, solid. Uh, he, he's a chameleon. Yeah. He blends into whoever he needs to, to blend into. And so speaking of that, mm -hmm. so I've worked with Jamie a number of times, okay. and like even when he's on the show, like there is no, there's not a moment in which he's not making fun, where he's not like doing something. To, and like, even during the commercials, he's out in the audience dancing and singing, and and everybody's having a good time. Yeah. So in a movie like this, which is you know serious. Film, is that the way he is? He is exactly like that. He I, mean, I mean, literally, we would have the most dramatic scenes ever and then literally yell cut, he'll take a deep breath, and then he'll be right out there with the extras telling jokes or playing music. He plays music a lot. Like, yeah. he has theme music no matter where he goes. So even on this movie... He, like, but he, well, you know, he, he did it in such a genius way. Like, he would play songs to get us in the mood of, like, a really somber mood. Like, he would play, like, old school music to really get us into, a, a like, a really, like, a serious tone. But then when it was when he was ready to switch the tone and we were getting out of it, he would play, like, you know, some, you know, Marvin Gaye or, like, you know, the Isley Brothers or really? the Temptations or something like that. Like, he so would play he was music. actually, he was, like, like... He was curating the vibe 24-7. Warming things up. He yeah. was. He was the perfect person for this, uh, for this, for this. I uh, see. I, here's the picture. I, the three of you guys together. Mamba. Do you think you're Kobe's favorite Michael Jordan? <laughs> I think... That's a great question. I mean, y yeah. Yeah, I'm, yeah, yeah, right? yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Right, yeah. if he had to pay. Yeah. 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 Hands down. Hands down. <laughs> so tomorrow's the big day. Tomorrow's the big day, man. Will you go around and check out uh, screenings? Will you pop into movie theaters to see I, how it's going? I, I might pop into a theater, too. I might recruit Jamie, you know uh -huh. what I'm saying, and go pop around and surprise some theaters. So Do you, you have know. any particular locations in mind? I'm going to throw out a couple. I'm going to throw out a... Arc, a, arc like Hollywood. Uh -huh. I threw out a, 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 you know, maybe a Grove Magic Johnson's theater, maybe okay. somewhere, and then you guys can just figure it out. All right. Well, that yeah. will be fun. <laughs> <laughs> and there are going to be a lot of disappointed people. There's going to be a lot of disappointed people, yeah. but just I'll be on the screen no matter what. <laughs> you One will way be. or another, I will be on the screen. <laughs> Michael B. Jordan, everybody. His movie's called Just Mercy. 
It opens tomorrow. We'll be right back. <laughs> hey, I'm Jimmy Kimmel. Give back this holiday season in a fun way. Buy my new book, The Serious Goose. I wrote it and drew it. All the money I make goes to children's hospitals across the country. Or watch another gaming video and don't help kids. It's up to you.